Hi, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the inrush current of a 50 watt floodlight. This is an LED floodlight. I'm going to quickly show the wiring diagram and then I will show the inrush current. Right, I have a supply. This is going to be a 230 volt supply. Then I have a switch and then I have an ammeter connected in line. And then I have a little 1 ohm resistor in series with my 50 watt LED light. Now the reason why I have this is because I wanted to scope out the voltage over the resistor to get a second ammeter reading and then I have my 50 watt LED floodlight and then I have a clamp on ammeter. So in this circuit I actually have three current measurements and the reason why I have three is well, this ammeter here, which is going to be this uh, Fluke 867B meter, is extremely accurate, but its response time is probably a bit too slow. So it's not picking up that minimum and maximum, that inrush current. But it is extremely useful for the nominal current. So I will be measuring the nominal current over here. And then I have this uh, 1 ohm resistor, which is going to be creating a volt drop, which will then be converted to a current measurement, which will then be uh, mapped on this uh, oscilloscope on channel B. Then I have this uh, Chauvin Anu current clamp, MN39, a very useful current clamp set to the 20 amp range. And then this will be on channel 1 of my uh, scope meter. And I've set the probe, etc. In this case, it's a 50 watt floodlight and I'll quickly show you the layout on the desk. Now it is a bit of a mess here on my desk uh, mainly because I want to try and get it the screens on the camera. Now what I have here is this uh, ACDC branded 50 watt LED floodlight. Now the most important thing with these floodlights is the driver circuit. Now we don't often get the inrush current with the data sheet and often we don't even get a complete data sheet uh, for these type of floodlights. I'm not specifically saying this particular brand but we buy these floodlights off the shelf. There are so many different types and uh, they actually not the same because the driver circuit, the size of the capacitor, etc., that's where that inrush current is originating from. So it's also almost a test of the different driver circuits because you can get LED floodlights that have a lower inrush current and they even specify it in those data sheets. Those often cost a lot more. Now why someone would do such a test is because specifying the amperage and curve type of the circuit breakers becomes quite tricky when one has quite a few LED lights because of this inrush current. Right, so I just have the power cable which is going to be plugged into my supply. I have a little switch to switch on and off so I'm only breaking the live wire. So it's pretty much how it would be in a house or an office. One will just switch on, switch off and then I'll be able to measure the inrush current and also the turn off current. That's something that people forget is that the turn off current also has a current spike. And then I have my current clamp over here and I have my series connected ammeter and there's my little 1 ohm resistor. I've calibrated this resistor to this uh, floodlight because I have used a few of these floodlights, measured the nominal uh, current and worked out that this 1 ohm resistor is pretty close to the actual current flow when I measure it using an inline very accurate multimeter. And I'll quickly just show you some of the readings. Now, just to get a voltage reading, the voltage is 228.5 volts, somewhere there. So it's quite close to 230. And the light is on there. You can see the light is on. The nominal AC current is 0.238 amps so 238 milliamps for this light while it is at steady state you can see the frequency there is 50 hertz this is recorded in south africa now the nominal current which i'll take as the reference measurement is 235 uh, milliamps now looking at my scoped uh, values converting voltage to current channel b this is using the one ohm resistor so just using the settings for current b I'm measuring the current and I've set it to 100 millivolts per amps and there we can see 231 milliamps. We can see that the probe corresponds to the inline value. So they're quite close, so I can call it uh, semi-calibrated. Now the current clamp, there's the current clamp measure. It is a bit lower, the MN39 and that is 207 milliamps. Now let's check the inrush current. 
Now, in order to reduce the flicker, I've had to overexpose the picture a bit. Now, having a look at the current clamp, you can see there's quite a lot of noise that is associated with that wave. Now, if you have a look at the measurement over the resistor, I don't have that noise. And that is one of the reasons why I've chosen to use a resistor, because I'm not going to be using magnetic coupling. So, let's have a look at the trigger. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, change the time base to one millisecond, because that's more realistic for that type of uh, measurement. I'm also setting the current per division to 2 amps for each side. So each one of these divisions is now 2 amps. Now I'm going to switch off the light. So there's an immediate surge there on the turn off, but I'll talk about that more just now. Let me switch it on. Right, so there is the turn on of the lamp, the two current measurements and they pretty much agree with each other. The current clamp has higher noise. Remember that it also had higher noise when I was doing the regular nominal measurement. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on this wave at the bottom. Right, so I've turned on there. And you can see that they, they pretty much agree with each other, although the current clamp probably has that hysteresis. So it's uh, a bit higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch off the current clamp reading for now. Just use the other reading. I find it's more accurate. Right. So that's the turn off, by the way. So when I turn it off, notice this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and above amps. Right. Turning on. All right, so there we go. Two, four, almost four amps for that turn on. Now I'll turn it off again. Turn off is actually worse than the turn on. Right, that's it. Look at that. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and higher. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the current per division amps per division at five amps. Now I'm going to turn off and turn on. Right, so there we go. We got five. 10 and a bit. So just over 10 amps there. There again. Uh, just about maybe about 7 amps. Right, look at that one. So we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 amps. Right over here we have 30 amps on turn on. Now why does it change so significantly? Well that has to do with where in the voltage waveform I am turning on. Right, the inrush current is related to the phase angle of the voltage. So that means that if I turned on the supply and the voltage was at 90 degrees, then we would see a maximum inrush current. If I turned on the supply and it was near a zero crossing, then the lead driver circuit would charge normally as the voltage increases. So the worst conditions would be at 90 and 270 degrees. Right, I'm going to turn on and off a few times. I'd like to try and get a peak one. So on, so I've changed this to 10 amps. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 54 amps. Right, so I'm using the current clamp now uh, just to uh, compare. And this is what the output of the current clamp is like. Okay, it's set to 2 amps. Let me just change it to 5 amps. And uh, this is what we, we're getting. So even with the current clamp, I'm still getting these very high currents. I mean, if I change that's five amps per division. So that is 35 and possibly more. Another turn on. So that's a hundred. That's almost 120 amps according to the current clamp. OK, just analyzing some of the results. All right. On the left hand side, I've just got the attempts. That's when I was uh, switching it on and off. And then these are the nominal currents. The current stays the same. So the current for the 50 watt floodlight was 0.234 amps. And over here in column C, these are the peak inrush currents. What I have here in column D is the times higher. How many times higher was the maximum peak inrush current than the nominal current? All right, so looking at the first attempt, 3.8 amps is 16 times higher than the nominal current. Over here, you can see that 14 amps is 60 times higher. And uh, if you scroll down the list, one can see that sometimes the inrush current is way above 100 times higher than the nominal current. So I have seen reports on the internet saying that uh, LED turn on current can be 
more than 100 times higher and I was a bit skeptical of that but now having tested that myself I can see that even 200 times and as I said this really does depend on the LED driver circuit and at what phase the voltage was at the time of turn on. Then I have located this article which says inrush related problems caused by lamps with electronic drivers and their mitigation. Right, I'm just going to show you two things that the authors have demonstrated. Here are some of their waveforms and one can see that they were just testing a 20 watt LED lamp and you can see that they also had these very high peaks considering that this is the 20 amp mark so this is above 25 amps and considering that this is only a 20 watt LED. And just having a look at some of their results, their 20 watt LED with internal driver, the maximum inrush current they found was 7 amps and then they had another LED that were using an external driver and one can see that it's not uncommon to get these very high currents. This is 30 amps and even here a 3 watt internal driver that is a small LED light and look at that maximum inrush current, 14 amps. So just referring back to my results, you can see that we do get these very high inrush currents for LED uh, driver circuits. And I hope this video is helpful. If you'd like to see more tutorial videos, please check out my playlist on my YouTube channel called Electrical Tutorials. All right. Thanks for watching and cheers.